What is up, App Nation? It is Steve P. Young, founder of AppMasters.com, the place you go when you want action-packed content related to helping you grow your downloads and your revenues because I've made it a business, really. And it's one of the best things I like. I love to do. Talk to really awesome people to really learn from them. And this guest that we have on, she knows so much about Facebook ads that when I was having trouble helping a client out with their Facebook ads management, I reached out to her and I was like, Gina, can you please spare 15 minutes to help me out? And she did. And she gave me some great insights. And if you haven't checked out our podcast episode on Facebook automated app ads, go check that out add out. It is episode 827, 827, close to a thousand episodes. Well, without further, further ado, let me introduce the guest. Her name is Gina Kwong. She runs Mobile Growth at Electronic Arts, better known as EA. She focuses on mobile growth for EA's mobile titles and has great experience in creative testing across multiple channels. So let me bring her on. Gina, welcome. Hey, thanks for having me again. Thanks uh, for being here. I mean, I really appreciate you taking the time. You've got so much knowledge in the Facebook ad space, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of questions about how to really scale it and the impact of it. But anything on top of mind for you these days? Um, probably what's on top of mind for everybody else, 14.5 on iOS. Um, I think it's just uh, we are all adapting there. It's it's a challenge that knew we were well that we all knew were coming, um, but you know. None of us knew what we were dealing with until it kind of went live. Yeah. And yeah, here we are. And um, it's, it's very different for each channel. So um, and probably for each product as well, depending on like, you know, uh, where the niche traffic they're getting the, their users from in user acquisition. How does it, how have you guys adjusted from a Facebook ads perspective to iOS is 14.5? And for those who aren't familiar, it's just the IDFA I'm assuming, and it's, you know, Apple not allowing certain things being tracked anymore. Um, the, you don't expand it's all, on that. You know much more than I do. So like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's basically just, you know, Apple, of course, like requiring that all apps that actually want to track users to throw up a prompt when the user comes into you know any app so it's for your own app as well as your um the apps that you are trying to market in right so um that of course takes uh some adjustments and then on the back end you know like the way apple passes back any sort of data is via the scan post back and um <clears throat> the adoption rate is actually a lot slower than uh, everybody thought uh, was going to be until recently, where Apple basically is kind of very strongly suggesting that you update, um, especially if you're plugged in like late at night or something, to 14.6. Hey, Gina, are you seeing anything, you know, I, we, we all have seen this prompt where like, would you like to be tracked? And then, you know, yes or no. Are you able to track how many people opt into the yes versus declining? Um, I don't, well, I don't think it's, it's the, the opt out rate has been kind of fluctuating. It really depends on the app. Um, and like the type of use that the user is, um, like if it's like a utility app or whatever that they um, really need, um, you know, certain way, like Apple allows a certain, like very, very kind of tight language, but there's a way where you can actually, hey, you know, uh, tell your user this, if you allow us to do this, uh, it's a better experience or whatever like that. But it's, mm -hmm. it's a very fine line, right? That because Apple still re reviews that part, um, and then, you know, then you can use it and, but even then the opt out rates probably higher than a lot of apps would like. Um, so actually some apps are choosing not to throw up the prompt and not track at all on iOS. Oh, really? Which is, just, which is really interesting. Cause it's not something I actually knew until one of my friends. Um, I mean, we always knew that was an option, but we did, it wasn't something like, it didn't really even occur to, I think probably a lot of gaming um companies because it's like sub is better than nothing but it all depends on like what is the opt-out rate right um or and also like what's the bounce rate after the prompt goes up 
how have you guys adjusted to either shifting less budget to Facebook and other ad platforms, or have you adjusted in sort of optimizing these channels and reporting back on these channels as well? Um, yeah, so we're adjusting, right? Like Facebook is a little different. We all know that Facebook doesn't pass back anything. Um, currently, uh, as well, I hope that they maybe change their mind at some point. Um, but of course that just means as everybody already knows, we are shifting budgets, um, kind of changing how, you know, where we spend our money in terms of, um, channel mix, platform mix, things like that. And, you know, I mean, I'm sure Apple anticipated this happening, but I'm just, I'm personally curious, like what is the threshold? Because, um, you know, I'm sure most advertisers are shifting mm -hmm. their budgets to Android. Um, but it all, it's, it's definitely like dependent on kind of like how are the sub 14.5 campaigns still working? Are you kind of, when you're reporting, are you kind of just saying, look, there's going to be some messed up numbers. Like, <laughs> and so does that mess up your ROAS and how you guys report back and how you guys sort of optimize certain campaigns on iOS? Well, yeah, well, yes. I mean, it's always <laughs> a caveat, right? That you tell yeah. your partners um, because for us, we support like studio partners, right? And because we're the central team and essentially they are like uh, like a client for an agency. I mean, for lack of a better kind of uh, analogy. And we definitely want to give as much information as possible to the team. And interestingly enough, like, the budget really hasn't like dropped overall, but um, it's definitely kind of like a shift, right? Where the performance is coming from, um, where we're we spending money or, you know, the budget and um, really caveat like, oh, well, you know, iOS may look good for certain days or here and there because of sub 14.5 campaigns. But as adoption mm -hmm. picks up even more, because right now I, I believe it's like, 50, 60%. Um, and then I think like a lot of it's actually kind of um, strongly suggested when you plug in your phone. Um, <laughs> I get that update. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I've heard a lot of people got updated to 14.6 because they plugged in their phone overnight and it wasn't even like, you know, I agree. Um, so <laughs> yeah, so like I, I would imagine it's only gonna go up. So it's something we're planning on, you know, we are, looking at different like channels for diversification, um, things like that. But I mean, I think that's just normal. Like mm. it's, I feel like, you know, <laughs> I don't even know if I should say this, uh, as a UA marketer, change is basically the everyday normal, you know? Um, and uh, if you're kind of maybe out of the game or haven't really spent on certain channels, it's, it's somewhat like you're a little behind, but, um, I'm not a big fan of change. <laughs> so like <laughs> for me, I'm like, uh, okay, yeah, I'm just gonna have to like really adapt and challenge myself to do this. But um, yeah, I mean, we're kind of like holding our breath still, you know, it's like, okay, when when is gonna be the day where it's like, there will be no sub 14.5 and then what happens? Like what is gonna be, you know, the baseline here so that we can really just see where we are. Um, and then plan for that. And, you know, we we really do adapt, you know, UA marketers, we're very creative. There's way, there are definitely ways to spend on iOS and see the impact, but it really depends on like, where is your baseline for, you know, base, it's really basically measuring organics, right? And seeing mm -hmm. like, okay, what is the lift if you spend? And if you don't spend, what happens? Um, so it's like pretty, you know, like, it always amazes me how creative um, people in the industry are. And um, I admire that because I'm not creative at all. Um, but, you know, it's just more like number space, but um, just being kind of nimble on that is amazing. All right. We got some questions from the audience. Who cares who I am today? <laughs> I like that. What targeting would you use for arcade or hyper casual games? targeting what I use. So, uh, you know, they, um, 
you know, I was on last time uh, yeah. about talking about AAA. So I personally would use AAA. Actually, the way iOS 14.5 campaigns are set up on Facebook, using AAA is kind of your only option if you're a global game or, mm -hmm. you know, global, global product because you only have a, you know, set number of campaigns you can run. And after, you know, tearing out your countries and optimization types, things like that, you know, you'll, you'll use up those campaigns already. Now, if you know your game is like, you know, if it's hyper casual, likely it may work better for one gender more than another. Uh, I won't say which, but um, if you know that already, maybe like a certain age group, um, but you won't know that with AAA. So you will have to run like some lookalike campaigns to get that data and then kind of hone in on that. And also maybe like, opt you know, localization. Some localization campaigns have worked depending on kind of where, if the um, the product is, has like more affinity for certain language, uh, certain type of, ge certain geos, things like that. Um, I personally have not had a whole lot of success from like interest or behavioral type of targeting, but I have seen like um, Facebook uh, insights, like audiences, that type of um, segmentation uh, done well and low scale though. So it, it's all like kind of a lot of segmentation, testing, figuring out what works for your product and like scaling from there with you know a lot of creative optimization things like that call me stupid anytime gina but i would think that facebook AAA is perfect for mo mobile games and casual games because it's like everybody is sort of your audience right yeah and you know uh i learned new things every day that's what i thought as well but then recently um i was talking to one of my colleagues and we're I'm like, oh yeah, like AAA for sure. And then they're like, well, actually it all depends, right? Like it depends on your uh, spend scale, um, your product and like how good your um, product or how good does your app convert to purchasers? Mm -hmm. And Facebook is also really good at lookalikes. Um, and if you feed it as like so much information, they will, you know, it will find you more of those. So like if you're, I mean, hyper casual obviously means like you have a lot more purchases than the, maybe like a mid core game, like our games. So you all just have a lot more data points. So like, you know, on Facebook or even other ad networks, when the algorithm has like much, much more data points to play with, or, you know, utilize that information, then they will have a much better chance of making like a non AAA campaign work, which sometimes does work better than AAA. You know, I will admit begrudgingly, <laughs> uh, you know, the data shows what the data shows. So like, uh, again, I've always kind of, you know, we talk about this, like definitely test, but you know, we provide ideas. I'm happy to share because I find this industry, um, no matter what you know, you don't know until you test on your own product. Yeah, so true, so, so true. Mm -hmm. I like it. All right, we'll get to another question from Romain and then we'll, Roman actually, and we'll get into some of the app audits. Roman says, please advise campaign structure for game installs, you know, how do you structure a campaign? And I think what I would like, love to know from you is like, do you put a certain number, a per certain percentage of your campaign for acquisition, for retention and, re and engagement? Do you have a nice little split between those two? Um, so we don't, I mean, I think like, uh, majority of the campaigns I've run, <clears throat> excuse me, throughout my career has been, um, acquisition. So I'm a UA marketer. We, I have like not done a whole lot of retention campaigns. Re-engagement I used to do when I was like in e-commerce. Um, it's, you know, retargeting, re-engagement, uh, was a big one for, um, uh, e-commerce like so it really again depends on your product um yeah. retention it's a metric that we review as the users come in but that to me is like i mean of course you know as what we do we look at the big picture but our focus is really new user acquisition so awesome. like 
I would say if I want to, if you want to give a percentage, it's probably like 90 plus percent, like new UA acquisition. Yeah. And I've sort of, you know, I have more experience with Apple search ads and that's what we primarily focus on. We do have a retargeting campaign in there, but that hasn't done that well. I do know that from a previous guest peak, the brain training app, they were saying that they had a seven day window. So they do a lot of retargeting within that seven day window to get more subscribers. So I think if it's subscription based, maybe there's a window for retargeting, but depends on your optimism, your monetization as well for the game. Yep. Yeah. And you know, if it's an older game, maybe focus on re-engagement makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, if you're like, obviously a newer game, it really depends on like the lifetime of, you know, where your game is at. Yeah. I like it. Okay. And I think we've answered this Roman to so let us know, but he also asked what targeting for acquisition campaigns and Gina's big fam, triple a automated app in the ads, right? <laughs> you know? I am. I am. I think that's like, <laughs> the best way to see, you know, what, what works for your app. And, um, that's really contingent on like on the back end, you understanding what these user, users demographic is like, so that, you know, you provide more information for, you know, ac like acquisition ads. Yeah. It's super cool too. And you know, like you, you really got me into it. And so I was running for a client. Thank you so much for helping me with that client. And we, we were able to see so much details, what, creatives work, what headlines worked, who the people were, and we we're able to drive really good cost per installs for a client using those AAA ads. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. And it's always, almost always lower CPI, just because you're taking away a lot more restrictions, you know, that um, AAA campaigns can look for your users. Now, ROAS, if you're looking for, you know, ROAS and, or, you know, return on ad spend, um, it's really dependent, you know, on again, on your product. And I have heard some lookalike campaigns do better, even with higher CPI. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you want to eventually, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, you know, but like AAA is a great way to get started. And then once you have enough user base, you want to move to a lookalike audience because they tend to be the best performing or no. I think it's still dependent because, um, a lot of our campaigns, across you know all titles um are good percentage on triple a uh, and i hear that from other people as well but i think that if you want to test more um in a you know in addition to triple a that's something that um it should definitely be tested as well got it okay mm -hmm. and roman when we say look we he said do you guys gina do you mean look alike on purchase campaign um yeah if that's that's what you're optimizing towards some people okay. optimize toward and um, i would say it's just like look like on app event or value so it depends on like um you know if you're because i think like we're we're really catering to you know a purchase kind of model here but there are other i'm sure products that are maybe optimizing towards a sign up or whatever right. tutorial complete um and if that that's what works, you can you can opt optimize on another event as well. So it just depends on what you pass back. Okay, I like it. All right, yes. All right, Gina, ready for my favorite part of the show? It is time <laughs> to get into app audits as well. And then, if you guys want to get your app audited by me and my special guest, just go to appmasters.com/audit. We've seen some amazing results, and people who tune in, you know, Gina had a call with somebody yesterday. He's like, you know, I've increase my conversions by like 200% for one app, another app, it was like, I think 35%. And so tune in where we do provide some pretty good insights on this stuff in terms of revenue numbers. So go to appmasters.com slash audit. But Gina, before every app audit, I like to tell that joke. So you ready for one? Yes. All right, Gina. Place. Why was this? Why was the spaghetti sad? Why was the spaghetti spaghetti sad? No, I don't know. Because I'm terrible. Wife, <laughs> I'm because terrible of, at these answers. <laughs> you know, I don't want you to ask. You just say, I don't know, right? <laughs> because his wife pasta away. Boom. <laughs> right. I love, I love, love, love these type of jokes. Like, <laughs> Me too. yeah.
Uh, I love it when my, when I can get my son to crack up. We'll usually do it at dinner, and then we're we, he and I, or it's either my daughter or my son, we'll just be dying laughing. All right, let's take a look at this first app from. Like this is one of my. I know my eyesight's going bad. I gotta like zoom into my computer right here. Yes, sorry. I think is the way I'm gonna say it. Yes, sorry. She's got he or she's got this app. I've got any a pre person said. I'm gonna assume he's a he. Okay. I appreciate any advice from you guys. All right. So this is a happy pet adoption app. I think it's Google Play only because that's the only app I got. But anything you want to start off with, just from the app store listing, Gina. Um, well, it looks like it doesn't have any app previews here. Um, oh, here. Like this one of the video. Yeah, I think like, it, I think the description could be a little bit more, um, comprehensive maybe. Um, let's see. It looks like it's a pet adoption. So it said Pappy Pet adoption app find pets in your area for adoption you have a pet you can give or sell it okay mm -hmm. interesting i think you know from an aso perspective obviously pet adoption would be a good keyword for you to try to target in on i think with an app like this when you say your area you probably want to be concentrated in a certain area in my opinion especially if it looks like you're just starting off with a thousand downloads so far so and I don't know if you can do this, Gina, but I always recommend to clients like, hey, just get concentrated in whatever area you know best, whether it's the Bay Area for us, you and I, or somewhere else. It's like, just focus on that area because you want a high density, like a dating app. You want a high density of users in a given area and obviously, mm -hmm. and so you might, that's say use Facebook, right? That's the best source to drive downloads for this type of app. Yeah, definitely. Um, I would focus on, you know, probably urban, city mm. uh sometimes like the founders kind of focus on where they they live because they can maybe talk to um local stores um uh, like pet stores or whatever so that they can have some partnerships that help drive these apps um i well the rumor was that's how like you know tinder started i don't know if that's completely true um yeah. So it's just like more, um, like you said, it, I think that's a huge, like really great point that you focus on like each city, given that it's, you're, you're almost de dealing with like tangible type of product, right? Um, that your app is dependent on. Yeah. And let's take a look at the website. So yes, sorry. Yes, sorry. I think I'm going to try that. You, if you can tell me in the comments, looks like, all right, I'm, I'm just on his website right now he's got that promo video some highlights you know what i think that's missing from just the i'm gonna look at the app store as well from the screenshots are happy pet owners right like i think we want to see lots of pets we want to see happy pet owners as well and so i think i would try to highlight that and be like you said you have to find your next pet but like show some pets you know like show some cute dogs nothing that's more find your like, next companion is probably better <laughs> that's i love that right like yeah Nothing gets more likes on Instagram than like cute dogs, right? Like so exactly, like so real cool. ones. Yeah, <laughs> your first one, your first one, and then you should definitely should test like you know previews, um, on you know like an app store. And the, you're definitely more of an expert on ASO than I am, um, but like just test like which one is better in terms of mm -hmm. being your first page because most people probably don't scroll through. Um, it's almost like the same as like carousel ads on Facebook, right? Mm -hmm like your first one should catch their attention because likely they're not going to go through um, same as videos, actually just giving more information here. <laughs> yeah. um, like people don't watch more than the first, like three to four seconds of any video, even if it's auto played. Yeah. And I think, you know, like when I, I search for happy pet adoption, so let me pull up my, my phone here. And I think having happy pet is a not, a great app name because when I search for it, there's a lot of games. That means it's probably pretty competitive for you to try to rank for it. And then I had to put happy pet adoption. And even then look at you, you're not even one, two, three, you're number four on this. So I think ASO is going to be a real problem. It doesn't look like they're using the app previews video as well. That's what I wanted to check out. Okay. Well, I have, I thought you only sent me, sorry, you only sent me the Google play. So I have the Google play loaded on my phone. I don't have the iOS version loaded on my phone. So 
Let me see if I can get it. Let's see how quickly I can get it. This internet at the office is slow, but I prefer to show off my phone here. Anything else you want to add while this loads, Gina? Um, yeah, I think it's just, it's, it's probably like, maybe this is like V1. I think there's definitely iterations that you can test um, mm -hmm. in terms of like app icon. You can always like test different app icons. That looks like maybe a cat, maybe a dog would do, would do better. Yeah. Um, who knows? I mean, no offense to cat lovers. Um, <laughs> um, I love, I think kid, kitties are really cute. Oh yeah, Pet Finder. I actually did use that when I was trying to look for my, uh, right, when so I was I trying to adopt a dog. But so look, think... look at that preview, it's so cute, right? It's like yeah. immediately it catches your attention. Like in those, it's basically very obvious what it is. It's not going to be mixed up with a game. Yeah, and I do like that. It's like, you know, you see pets. See, show lots of pets, right? Like they're showing a lots and lots of pets as a preview video. And I just wanted to, you're on the topic of the icons, and I just wanted to kind of show off different icons when you search for pet adoption. So, mm -hmm. absolutely. Cool. Okay. So really looks like a lot of, it's a big market. And so, all right, let's get into happy pet. Give you some advice on the app itself. And yes, sir. says I can do some things for having me on. Come on. You can use this stuff. All right. I'm going to try it. Log in plus one zero 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 one one one. Two, 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 two. Thank you, yes, sorry. You're the best. And then there are one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, save me so much time. I love this. All right, Casa. <laughs> Gina, sometimes I'm just like signing up for a lot of these things. So it looks like. <laughs> our, it looks like you are the in the market. What's that? <laughs> I said, it looks like you're in the market for everything, which is great. You're like the, you're the person that everyone wants to target. Have you been getting our ads? <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Should we go to Casablanca, Morocco, Chile, or Spain? Yes, sir. What do you think, man? Tell me. Morocco um, sounds better. Morocco? Okay, <laughs> like, let's try it. Is that, is that, is that an option? Is that an option? <laughs> well, actually, I can, it is, Morocco is an option, but when I click on it, it doesn't get me done. Hmm, error? So is it only Morocco. available in the US? No, it's, it's, I don't know what's going on. Morocco, done? Okay, that's kind of weird. All right, that was a weird user experience. I had to X out to get to it. That might be, yeah, that, that might bad. be a bug. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Fix that. All right, yeah, sorry. Otherwise, <laughs> it's... I think I honestly would try to make it more like Instagram. I mean, from a UI perspective, I'd make these icons smaller because I think most people are looking for dogs anyways. So bring it a little bit less and make these pictures bigger if you can. Cause like, why, you know, why so small here? People want to see these dogs. I love this adopted. Great. You know, show these pets. Holy crap. 3000. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry for your Let's audience. Let's go in. Um, My turn. The Bichon, right? Bichon, okay. The Bichon freeze. I, I yeah, only know. There's not much dog. I know about dogs. I'm obsessed with dogs, so like uh, I try to learn as much as I can. I don't know. If this is what I would do. Like, look, this phone number is right here. Like, I don't know. Would I call them? I don't well, know. also then you know you lose your your users. You don't even know if they have adopted or anything. Right. You, you right. may want to keep. It's like one of the. It's the type of app that's like if you're successful, then you use your. You lose your users, like a dating yeah. app, right? So you gotta try to figure out like what else can you do to engage your users, like after. Oh, that looks like my dog. The one Which one? The this last one? one. No, if you scroll up. Oh, actually, kind of. Uh, keep going up. One more. Right this here. One? Yeah. Super cute. Yeah, she. That's what she looked like when she was a baby. Now she's a monster. <laughs> she's a very cute one. How do you say this, sir? Bichon. Bichon. Yeah. 
Bichon. That's the type of dog, Bichon. Well, it's a usually it's a Bichon freeze, but I think this is might be like a mix or something. Bichon oh, yeah. Maltese or something like that. Uh, please don't quote me. I mean, I I'm learning. Don't hate me. Um, <laughs> I call it Bichon. I don't think can anybody would hate you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it can be like pretending to be an expert here. And then they're like, wait, you don't even know this mix? Uh, you know, these are, yeah, they're very cute. But yeah, I think it'd be really interesting to maybe not just, I mean, maybe that's like B3 or three, B4 down the road, but offer um, other services other than just help you find your pet. Like perhaps like Agreed. the things that you may need when you do have your new pet, right? Because there's like a starter kit that I definitely think that you need as a um, as a new dog owner, but maybe I'm kind of going off of what they are actually looking for in terms of recommendations for the app. Yeah. Um, cool, yeah, I would yeah. hold the, um, the, the icons up top steady though. Um, as you scroll up, but like mm -hmm. smaller, like you said. Oh yeah, like kind of like Instagram stories in a way. Yep. Just, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that idea too. I think the monetization, you're gonna have to figure that out. But I agree with Gina. Like I think showing this contact information is a little bit weird. You wanna keep people in the app itself and so that when they do end up transacting, you know that they've transacted. Just if you're not even trying to monetize off it, just so you have that data that, hey, this platform is working maybe you're just covering it by taps. Like if I tap on this call or message and that's your success metric, but whatever that KPI is, it would be good to keep people within the app itself, not just have them leave. So unless you're trying to build a, a Google of pet adoption, I don't know, I mean, I know Google just gets people to leave quick and that's their business model, but yeah, be careful with that. Yeah. Um, actually having like a, actually, I think it's also, keeping the trust of your users to be able to communicate via the app yeah. because it's, I mean, you know, like they're trusting you and you are um, kind of maybe keeping some of this communication, like a little a lot more um, straightforward in it when it's in the app. Yeah. Like, and then Alex recommended you need to be able to sort categories beyond pet type, male, female dog. I mean, male, female age, et cetera. So it's a good example too. You may want to consider yes sorry cool all right gina so we got moving on to this next topic roman asks gina uh, automated app ads it's triple a facebook ad campaign right mm -hmm. yep. automated okay. app ads mm -hmm. yeah people call it triple a i mean i've always, like, always called it i would like to believe that i started that trend but you know nobody can tell all right do, 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 do. okay we got other questions. Rafi says, what metrics do you use to decide if a campaign is considered a success? Well, it's definitely um, dependent on what you consider uh, a successful KPI, right? Like yeah. if it's a somebody, you know, low cost per purchase, um, low CPI actually, when you first start, um, how engaged are people, you know, users in your app? Do they keep coming back? What's the retention rate? So it's, um, it really is dependent. I mean, like for gaming is uh, most games, uh, it's ROAS and LTV. So it, it all depends. Yeah, I agree. And I think that, I think you hit it on the head. Gina is just starting out low cost per install. That's what you want. The most engagement, maybe you have a MMP mobile measurement partner and you can see like, Hey, which campaigns are driving me the, the highest retaining users, because that's going to be important too. But I think in the beginning, start with AAA and then focus on cost per install. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Roman says, Roman's got a lot of questions for you, Gina. What, what, what's okay. expected CPI, cost per install, cost per result? What do you think? Any good metrics around that? Uh, well, it's really dependent on your genre, right? Because if I give you a certain number, then you'll be like, wait, is that correct? Um, may, if, especially your games will be off uh, or different than what I'm telling you. So, because it's like in the US, obviously you expect to have higher CPI, CPC, CPMs in general, and then like tier one versus tier two, tier three, et cetera. So it really is like, where is your game, you know, um, the most popular? I've definitely seen games that have a lot more international audience uh, affinity to have lower CPIs. 
uh, versus ones that are like maybe 60, 70% US. Um, mm -hmm. The CPIs can be anywhere between, you know, 10 to $15. Wow. Even on Android and nowadays, Android is, is expensive because a lot of people are, a lot of advertisers are moving to Android. CPMs are going higher. Um, and it's a little bit harder, maybe a lot harder to get the audience that you're looking for. Get out. That's crazy. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. The landscape is definitely changing and everybody is still, nobody's freaking out anymore, but they're just like, <laughs> wait, what's happening still? And so, yeah, we're, um, a lot of things are changing. So maybe even the metrics that I'm telling you will continue to change as it always does. Right. It's um, so dependable Android, like so cheap, just, you know, like if you want installs, just use Android. Yeah. I mean, but that's the thing. Like it used to be, you know, a, a Android user versus the iOS user. Um, their LTV is so different. Yeah. And we've been talking about that gap kind of, you know, narrowing for a very long time. And now I think we're kind of finally here. <laughs> so really? It's only, I mean, it's, uh, I, I see it and, um, it's narrowing. I mean, That's I don't great. know if they're exactly the same still, but mm -hmm. you know, but it's also like Android is much more international than iOS, right? Like iOS, it's mostly kind of expats people with a lot more, you know, uh, disposable income yeah. than, you know, internationally than the U S. I want to say hi to a few people. Bianca, always good to see you. Can get out. Rafi's here. Didn't get to say hi. Alex, we've got William. What's up, William? The Lyricster. All right, we're going to take a look at your app. So I'm glad you're here. Roman, of course you're here. Got to a lot of amazing topic. I'm happy to know new things. Thanks, William. Have a happy you. Adrian from Celtic Whispers is here. Paul, how's it going? And then Roman, Rashid Dev. All right, what's happening? Hello, Gina. Wash hands. I don't know what the wash hands is for. I'm just getting ready. Is that what it means? What's a wash hand emoji? <laughs> Maybe it's like waving. <laughs> Maybe. I am terrible with emojis. I'm like, is this appropriate? I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what does that really mean? Is Gen Z gonna like have something else up for, for these emojis that I don't know about and they're gonna laugh at me? I don't know. My brother does this to me all the time. He's like, He's like, rip. I was like, what does that mean? I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Rossi's here. What's happening? And Star Projectors. What's up, guys? What's up, Rossi? Okay, good. All right, we have one question here from Wonder. He says, thanks for the great content. Is Facebook ads a better deal than Google ads, or should we use both? Um, maybe I'm biased. I... Um, <laughs> Uh, it's because I, I, you know, I lead our pay social on um, uh, on the team for EA Mobile, uh, and I also always find that like Facebook is just that much more comprehensive or allows you to target right, like whatever segment you want to target. Like if there's something you think about, you can do that. But now the performance is whether it's good or not is like separate thing. Um, but of course, like Google has really improved their um, algorithm, the way they find the users that um, that you're looking for has improved significantly over the years. I don't remember if I mentioned this last time, but when Google UAC came out on the app, I was like very skeptical. Uh, at the time I was telling like um, my friends that worked there, I was like, hey, you know the product manager working on this, you should probably tell them not to do this. Mm. But of course I was wrong and I am uh, mature enough to say that I was wrong. And I'm happy to see that we do have like more than one, you know, big channel that we can market in. Um, and so I, I would say that, you know, they call it a duopoly for a reason. And you, I would just market in both and see what happens. And yeah. you will see shift in budget back and forth a lot. Um, iOS 14.5 is TBD. I think that one is going to be the one that's really interesting and in, like what is um, available in terms of like data and what's shared. I think that will help dictate where this the money will be spent on iOS for both of these platforms. Got it. 
All right, Gina. I know we got some. I know we got some questions, so I'm definitely going to get into it. But I want to make sure the people who showed up for their app audit, we're going to get to their app audit as well. So let's get to the next app audit. And before I do, if you got another joke for you, Gina. All right, here we go. <laughs> what do you actually? Here, let me move the camera angles. What do you get if you drop a piano down a mine shaft? What do you get if you drop a piano down a mine shaft? I don't know. I mean, I would a have flat, like a flat minor. <laughs> <laughs> My bell's broken. Oh. Flat minor. I was like, you know, it's like always that couple seconds. You're like, wait, do I get this? And then it's freaking hilarious. I was like, oh yeah, really? Yeah. I was like, Some of them take a little bit longer. I got to admit. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them take a little all right, Rafi says, I need help increasing downloads and subscriptions. So Rafi's app is right here, Outfit Tracker. Looks like it's available on both platforms. And mm -hmm. let's take a look at that real quick on the App Store. Okay, I've got it, and I've got it loaded on, let me hide my bookmarks. So I Outfit Tracker. The, yeah. Sorry, I think the, the buttons for the, the App Store and Google Play Store is a little off. Is that what it's supposed to look like? So, you know, like I think users are trained to find those, um, what they look like. So then oh, they're, yeah, yeah. they know to click on them. So perhaps updating that. Like these, okay. these yeah. default. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that. Just use the default badges that they provide for you anyways. So we got this outfit tracker. Look, I think from an ASO perspective, you know, Diary planner, outfit planner, outfit of the day. Like those are good keywords for you. Your subtitle, you have AI to journal fashion clothing. I don't, I don't know what that means, but like focus on outfit of the day, outfit tracker, outfit. I don't know. Anything related to that outfit would be interesting, but I think this is a wasted subtitle from a ASO perspective. Cause you want to put this AI stuff. This does mean AI into the screenshots versus just having it in the subtitle here. Mm-hmm. All right. How would you go about advertising this, Gina? Um, I think this to me, like just looking at it without knowing what it is, it's like, mm -hmm. it's just a bunch of females. It's not really telling me what's happening. Perhaps like putting mm -hmm. like different, uh, or having like even just a video of like in the first screenshot, of like different combinations of outfits because then i know yeah. what the heck that means right yeah like i don't need to, well i know that's the it's like basically planning out your outfit every day um but i think the most important thing is like you're trying to convey what it does it's basically like you have combinations that you can tie together and start with that and then you can in the co uh, subsequent slot um screenshots you can talk about what is what are some of the other features yeah so i, I think like definitely test video um and you know again i think you you're much uh, more of an expert on this one but i would imagine video will catch the people like users eyes as they scroll like because the, the preview kind of plays automatically as you scroll past it yeah. um and it's it, it will catch their attention even if the words don't yet so one thing I want to point out is that like when I put an outfit, I get outfit maker as the big one and not tracker. And so just know that, you know, one of the things I like to look at is what's Apple auto suggesting for me. It's outfit maker, planner, you got designer down here, finder, picker. So those are potential keywords that you might want to be using rather than diary or fashion. Maybe clothing makes sense, but then you might get a lot of e-commerce apps too. So. That's how I would change the ASO. And I like the video. So what we found, Gina, just the video not doesn't always work for all sorts of apps and really depends on the type of app. But games, obviously video, that's where it always improves. But I think for an app like this, like you wanna show it off. Like I like your idea of showing different outfits so that it sort of tells the user exactly what I'm able to get from this app. So, mm -hmm. all right, let me, let me see. And I just that's wanna see if other apps had video here too. Looks like this one does. This one does, purple doesn't. But that'll give you a sense of like, if these bigger apps have video, you might consider looking at video too. Mm -hmm. Right here. Okay, let's look into the app itself and help the subscription. 
I don't really like the icon too. If you look at these, they really pop, you know, they use yeah. bright colors. What kind of apps do like the videos do not work in app preview? I don't know if there's a type of app. It's just mixed reviews, mixed results. So there's not one category that says, oh, definitely don't use video. But we've heard from people where they put a video and actually decrease conversions. And it seems to be the, the consensus is that games, you should have a video and it'll always help you with that. But for other apps, it's sort of like the age old thing, test it because you just never yeah, know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Just curious because I was like, um, that, that's interesting. Outfit register, outfit tracker. All right. So I don't know what the big benefit of this is. It's just so I won't re wear the same thing multiple times on my YouTube live streams or like, what is it? You know what I mean? Uh, and I'm not. Okay. I, I'm not, I'm graphic. not generalizing here, but I think it may be different for females versus males. <laughs> Because <laughs> all of you black t-shirts, that's all I got. Trust me. That's all actually right. what I did at the beginning of the pandemic. I was like, I'm just only going to wear black. So yeah, then I don't it. have to worry about it when I'm on Zoom. Like, did I wear this yesterday? Like, is anybody going to know? No. <laughs> uh, have, let's see. Wonder what's up when it comes to... Uh, okay. You got questions. So sign in. Okay, cool. I'll sign in with Apple. Makes it easier. You. I always think you should ask for the push notifications before just showing it. I'm gonna hit allow for now, but that's it. All right. I do recommend this. This does actually work by showing this pricing page. It's kind of janky the way it showed up, Rafi. But like, I'm gonna do a video on this because we've seen some really amazing results from people that have increased their conversions by like or revenues by 12x, 5x, you know, 65%. So a lot of great stuff but you're missing a lot of key components. I think a longer pricing page, look back at our previous videos like Rudy did where we talk about this, but longer pricing pages are the thing to do, especially if your target market, and I'm gonna make the assumption, but if your target market's female, tend to find that females, look, okay, don't cancel me, but like they tend to want more information. And so the more information that you can give them to make sure that you're overcoming their objections, the better. And we, I will show you quickly this page where this is, they've 12 X their revenues, super mama, and you can just sort of analyze super mama and what they do. And I think it's good to have a FAQ. It's good to have these success stories. It's good to tell you what's the difference between basic versus pro some social proof, and then, you know, main benefits, which you kind of have main benefits, but go a little bit longer because people will read what they want to read and having it longer, longer makes them feel more comfortable buying from you. Okay. One month trial. I think that's too long. We found that usually one month people don't convert as much as well as they do for a seven day free trial. So play around with that as well. I like the boxes from the other one that you just showed to me. That's like very clean. Yeah. yeah you know, this is like very you clean. choose, you choose like three things. Um, and I remember reading an article about like tipping. It's like, they give you the three options, but none of it zero, you know, and they, they start with like 15, 20, 25, yeah. but they really want you to choose the one in the middle. So like, you know, obviously here is the same thing. It's like, it's almost kind of pre-chosen for you. Mm -hmm. So it that is. is the one that you want to, your users to convert the most because that's gonna provide you with the best LTV with user growth. That's what you should do. And like what you were saying, right? Like they can scroll down for more information, but the other, the, the alpha tracker, there's just too, it's just too wordy. I don't want to read it. I want to know exactly yeah, what I'm getting. And like, um, because the, otherwise you will have a lot of drop off here. Yeah. And I think, you know, the one thing I told super mama was like, what am I getting for versus the free versus the paid, right? Like, you know, if you go on any SaaS product, they'll usually say, here's the basic plan. You get these. Here's the free plan, you know, like, but yet as app developers, we don't do all that stuff. We just go, Hey, do you get free unlimited storage? But how much do I get with the free plan? So it's like, you know, it makes me sort of figure out, okay, do I really need this? What do I want? So forth. So that's what, I, and I think the other thing that's missing too, Gina, we have some case studies on this. So 68% of one person, Nick, he five X his revenues. What he found was look, it pays, right? Like, I mean, you're investing your time. When you tune into this stuff, it will benefit you. But he's 5X's revenues and he tracked everything, all the tips that we've been providing. And what he found was 68% of his revenues came from that onboarding sequence. So that welcome flow and that pricing page. And then about 
came from this main screen. So right now, let's say I've exited, I'm coming back the next day, I wanna track my, another, my next black shirt. Okay, this is cool, it's kind of annoying. But instead of annoying the user, show this premium option somewhere on this screen. Cause it's so blank right now, that show your premium option right here somewhere, rather than just having it blank. Cause I'm sure it'll look good. Maybe I'll take a photo of myself. <laughs> Best photo ever. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Use photo. Let's see. I should really pose, right? <laughs> I This is <laughs> taking me forever. I'm tapping use photo. It's not using it. Wait. All right. Come on, Rafi. That's you're losing. One, fix your, all your bugs, bro. Don't do this. I hate this. You're training the user to just X out of all that. Let's try it one more time. Crying out loud. Pose. Okay, good. What events? Uh, whatever. YouTube. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's, that's cute because it's like, you know, just keeping your users engaged. But yeah, it's taking too long. And then whenever you throw this like um, paywall up, it's kind of a turn off. Um, yeah. I didn't like that. See, I had to hit back to say I'm done. I didn't know where, how to do I'm done, that I was done adding this, and I had to hit back. So bad UI. I think you can fix a lot of UI. Again, there's so much room here to promote the premium version rather than hiding it here that I would just do that versus always bugging me every time I open the app to sign up. All right, that's it, Rafi. Good luck, brother. All right, Gina, we got a lot of questions for you. Okay, I'm gonna try to get through all of them. Do, 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 do. I'll start with this because I can't find the rest. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> my eyes are going really bad. I had I had a retinal detachment and I just need to fix them. All right, Gina is good cost per, what is a good cost per purchase? Do you report all sales to Facebook or just one? I don't know if I... I don't think you have a choice. You have to give, send Facebook everything. Okay. It's all attributed. Yeah. I like that. I like these. Quick <laughs> I was like, you don't have the choice. Good. Sandy says, how does AAA ads base their targeting on? Is it based on existing installs? That's a great question. Okay. So it really depends on how, how long have you been sending data to Facebook? It, Yes, it is existing because Facebook uses that information to be like, oh, well, this type of user has converted, that has installed already and has converted. So the match rate on Facebook is about 50%. So whenever you turn on your MMP with Facebook or connect with their uh, SDK directly, that's how they find um, and they will test. That's why they sp like spend, uh, I don't know, certain millions of impressions or hundreds of thousands in the beginning to find who these users that will convert on your, your app whether it's install or purchase or whatever optimization you want to do. Um, and then it hones in on them. But if you put restrictions on it, like outside of AAA, that's when it gets expensive. Okay. Great question, Sandy. Wonder asks, is it important to have a Facebook page or Instagram page in order to create better audiences to target? Not Instagram, but you have to have a Facebook page to run a Facebook campaign. Yeah. And the thing that we found out was don't limit your Facebook page to a certain country. Cause then you, you're trying to target other countries in your ads. It, defaults, it yeah. won't work. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, I found that out recently, but you can just allow them to, you know, target a certain country if you are doing a limited market test. Yeah. So just make sure nice to have that option. But isn't like the default, like everywhere, your Facebook page, everywhere, all countries, for some reason, our client limited to a certain country. So we're no, trying I think to the defaults Facebook like us and Canada, I think. Oh, that's it. Okay. Make yeah. sure it's available everywhere then. All right. Yep. Uh, Android CPI $15. So what is the cost per purchase? 40. I mean, do you have a rough estimate oh, of cost? No, yeah. that, that's a very good conversion rate for purchase. If it's $15, your C cost per purchase is probably in the hundreds. It really depends. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Which is not unheard of. $40 CPP, you should do that all day. It really depends well what it is. Happy Pet says a lot of people don't mind adding their numbers in Facebook groups and some other, some other websites. Okay, good feedback. Love to know that. 
Roman says, it wasn't washing hands. It was wave hands, dummy. All right, thank you. <laughs> I was like, that's why I was like, uh, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Lyricster, hey, Steve, what's happening, Lyricster? We're going to take a look at your app. Sandy, you said hi to you. All right, let's see what this... Wonder says, when it comes to ad assets, what are more relevant? Flashy images, benefits focused videos, or text with a good with good copywriting? Great question. Uh, I would advise you to test, but you know, Facebook has a 20% limit on text uh, overlay. So be careful with that, because otherwise it will get um, rejected. So I would test. test. Um, I've definitely seen one of these work for you know, better than others and across um, different products. Um, I would be lying to you if I tell you like some things work better than the others. But like, you know, flashy catches their attention, but that doesn't mean that down funnel, it will be better. Like converting to a purchase or, you know, how much they pay. All right, we are five minutes. How are you on time, Gina? You okay? Uh, I do have another meeting, but yeah, we can finish. Quickly. Okay, let's finish then. We're, we're All right, fast. Summer. <laughs> Summer is here. If you need to hop off, you can hop off and then I'll stay on for summer. All right, Summer. Lyric, I'm gonna skip your the dad joke. I'm gonna just say save for the end. So Gina doesn't have to be explicit. All right, Sumner, Summer says, as a brand new launch of our MVP, the onboarding experience and general marketing strategies for our app and network. All right, general marketing strategies for this app. It looks like it's a matching app for songwriters and producers, collaboration app for songwriters, producers, and composers. Any general marketing tips? What's your, if you had to come up with a marketing strategy, Gina, what would, what would you say? This sounds a lot like, um, are there, wasn't there another music app before that sounds very similar? Uh, I used to work for Smule, so my, our biggest competitor was Musical.ly, which now turns into TikTok. So, yeah. um, <laughs> um, or like, it kind of sounds like Napster, right? Like yeah, kind yeah. of, yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. Um, I've seen social network apps like this for musicians, uh, quite a few of them. So, but yeah, yeah, um, maybe I have songwriters, producers. I think the the proposition needs to be a little bit more clear. I don't think I understand. Um, app for. Yeah, and I think the screenshots are tiny if yeah. you think about it. So that's what I would change, Summer, is your – sorry, I'm moving – oops, moving things around. Sorry. But these screenshots are tiny. I can't read it. And so maybe on the app store it's a little bit better. But, yeah, I would try to increase those screenshots. And what's the main benefit? If You're, you're probably in the music, music space, so what's the main benefit of me going into the app? And I'm always, when I see social networks, I want to see that there are people in there. And so anything you can do to make sure that I know, show me that there are people in there would be beneficial for the app itself. But marketing wise, you know, I would start from the ground up, like go into your network, email a friend of mine. I just did a podcast interview yesterday, Gino. She was, he's like launching a Kickstarter. And he's like, you know what? One of the tips he gave for Kickstarter is like email a bunch of people, you know, you'd be surprised at how many people are willing to support you. So I'm going to assume some summer that you're connected into the music space, email as many people as you know and get them in on board because then you can start building up your social proof, getting good feedback from them because they're hopefully your friends and they'll be willing to support you and check out your app as well. So I would do I would start from the ground up because I think too many times we try to like avoid the people we know because we don't spam them or other things, but they'll give you the most valuable feedback. All right. Absolutely. All right. Feel free to disagree. Gina. All right. Okay. Let's get into the app while we still have Gina because we want to utilize her expertise on this. So it's only available on Google Play. I think another thing, and we found different things with most of our, like these podcast episodes haven't been launched yet, but what we found was sometimes sending people to the web is more efficient from a cost per cost per action perspective and also from a monetization perspective. So Summer, Think about, because you don't have the iOS app out yet, think about potentially sending people to your website and that might lead to higher user engagement and higher conversion and all that jazz as an option too. So if you're thinking about running Facebook ads, think about sending them to the actual website versus an app. It's just what we found from other users. I think it's app dependent, but possibly testing it out. 
All right, let's, this is not loading, but I see it on my phone. It says, find your perfect music creator match. Let me see if I can re-mirror this for you guys real quick. Gina, if you got to hop off, feel tell me, and then I will make sure we plug anything you want to plug. Yeah, um, I do, because uh, I have a okay. meeting with my mentor. <laughs> All right. It's not good to be late. Um, Gina, thank you so much for coming on and doing this. If the audience wants to connect with you in any way, do you want to send them anywhere else besides uh, your LinkedIn profile? Yeah, LinkedIn is good. I try to respond to everything. Um, uh, sales, I try not to get anybody's hopes up, <laughs> like unless it's it's a good, it's a good match. So thank you for having me. It's always fun. Um, I'm I'm glad that you wanted to have me on again. So that means you uh, I actually did a great job last time, yep. and, or it's informative for everyone, which is to me is the most important thing. Like I'm not. I don't really want to just talk about anything just to talk about it, right? Like I want it to be productive. Um, uh, that's that's the kind of the the goal here. Yeah. Anything I can do to repay you, Gina, because you were so helpful in oh, no worries. not expressing stuff. But this was so great. Thank <laughs> you so much. You know, <laughs> all good. Cool. All right. Have a great weekend. Bye. Have a great weekend. All right, guys. Let's get back into this app. This is my first ever app, and I'm bootstrapping it. So any suggestions are great. Okay. Cool. Let's get into summer. I'm still here for y'all. All right, good. So find your perfect music. I love that. This this UI feels a little bit off because you know the spacing is a little bit off. Uh, okay. Number two, what is your creator name? <laughs> I'm trying to think of a funny name, but I don't have one actually you know what people used to call me stevie p so i'll go with stevie p all right i am yo i've always wanted to be a singer so you don't have that but i'll put composer uh, i'll do that later where you located yeah i'm gonna put bay Area, san francisco let's put that okay san jose these buttons are kind of small summer so Okay, can I skip this? Usually you, you know, you, ah, sometimes you might allow people to skip this or you might not. I'm going to skip it for now because I'm going to see what those matches are. All right. So I think the best thing you can do is, oh, wow, that's interesting. Oh, awesome. So I guess you're trying to go in the Tinder model where I like it and I don't like it. Okay, back. I don't like this view at all, Summer. Summer, and I will tell you why because I think if I'm a if I'm looking for somebody if this is a matching thing, I want to see more content and not like this, right? Dating app kind of makes sense because you want to focus on one person. Do I really want to find a match? But I think here you kind of want to scroll like an Instagram a tick, or a TikTok, but more like an Instagram and see more people in a search result, kind of like a Yelp or a Google versus just one person at a time. Because I don't know, unless people are that picky, I'm not in the space, but I think I would prefer to see more people rather than one at a time, right? So, and then I, you said there's not many people on the platform. So yeah, yeah, matches may be short. That's fine. That's why going back to the happy pet summer, mm -hmm. I would try to focus on a given area, wherever your area is at, because I'm gonna assume you're connected in the space, focus on that market from a Facebook ads perspective, from a marketing perspective, from a Facebook groups perspective, focus on that particular market. And you know, we, we have clients who are more content creator in this realm. Think about how you can hack certain things by you know, like putting up a Craigslist post and saying, Hey, you know, we're looking for musicians. We need you to apply by going into this app. So think about clever ways from a local perspective, like next door, how you can hack certain local networks, local social networks to getting more people onto your platform. And that's why I always say like for an app like this and the pet adoption app, the more hyper local you can get, the better it's going to be. Everything that was as humongous today, like Airbnb, Uber, Lyft, 
Facebook all started hyper local and then obviously expanded. And so don't be afraid of being hyper local. All right. All right. So, so our pro network online is like a LinkedIn. Okay, great. I think that's it on my end. Oh, I don't think I have any other questions. If you guys had any questions, let me know, but that's it guys. I'll end it with this one last joke. Let me know. Now it's just me and you. So let me know in the comments, one through five, one, if you like it, no, five, if you like it, one, if you don't like it. All right, we'll go with that. All right, last joke here of the day. People in Athens hate getting up early. People in Athens hate getting up early because dawn is tougher on Greece. Plug to dawn. It's the dawn soap. Greece, get it. Takes a while to get it used to. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for tuning in. Once again, if you guys want to, my computer is getting so slow. If you guys want us to take a look at your app and really help you out, go to appmasters.com slash audit, appmasters.com slash audit. If you got a little bit of a budget and you want to sit down one-on-one -on -one with me, you can sign up for that premium plan. I just signed, you know, I talked to a bunch of different people and what we're, what I love getting from you guys is even if you did it for free, the emails that said, Hey Steve, I listened to you and it worked. Here's the percentage and give me those percentages, right? Cause then I can report back to the wider audience and let you guys know that there's data to support some of the hypotheses that I may have. Cause sometimes it is just hypotheses when I'm just looking at these apps and I'll tell you guys the difference between the two. All right. Thank you guys for joining. Thank, oh, I'm seeing so four. All right. Armel, Alex three. I like it. Thanks, Steve. Debeer said, why are your videos so long? This is the live stream, brother. It is always going to be long. Thank you. Thank you, Rafi, for joining, and thank you, Happy Pet, for being here. Thanks, guys. Have a fabulous weekend. Next week, we're going to talk about UA, but we're going to focus more on the Apple search ads of side, side of things. I've got a great guest who's the head of UA at Ripple, and so he's going to come on. We're going to talk about Apple search ads and any other related UA topics, but I wanted to talk about search ads since we talked about Facebook ads today. So tune in for that. We've got some amazing results to share with you. We've been managing a lot of clients for Apple search ads. So I'm trying to put together a mini course for you guys on YouTube for free, but stay tuned next week. If you have any UA questions, especially when it's related to Apple search ads. All right. Until next week, same time, 9 a.m. Pacific. That's probably five or six in the UK. And then it's about six, five 30, maybe I'm sorry, nine 30 in India. But anyways, have a great weekend guys. I'm blabbering. I'll see you next.